Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel. We're a little out of order. We're not in California any longer. We are back at home, it's been a couple days. And I kind of have an explanation to do and I could not do it while we were in California. It's all- We'll explain why. Yeah, we'll That's explain why, we're why. That's why we're here. <laughs> It was on Sunday. We left for our vacation on a Wednesday. So we went about just over halfway through our vacation. Woke up on Sunday morning. Jason went for a really early morning hike. What time did you leave? I woke up at four and was on the trail like 4.30. Yeah. So I'm gonna insert footage of that really quick so you can kind of see he went at super early in the morning to get the sunrise over to Palm Desert and then come right back because we're gonna explain what happened to me right after he got back. All right. So, it's about 4.30 in the morning. I am going on this hike. I put my shirt in the pool. The pool is warm, <laughs> but it feels nice and cool on me. It should help keep me cool. It doesn't feel too hot, even when I first stepped out. I'm sure it's probably in the 90s, but we'll see where it gets to. Going up there, I already see like two headlamps up there, and uh, I'm gonna test mine. Yep, it works. I don't think I can go all the way to the top of the uh, mountain or whatever it is. Uh, I don't think the trail goes all the way up there, which is a bummer. It's going to be kind of eerie hiking in the dark. I'm over here at Target walking through the parking lot. We'll see where it goes. I'll take some, hopefully get some nice sunrise shots. All right, you can just talk to me in the dark. I've been going for a while now. It's bloody hot. The trail, I think I lost the trail for a little bit, but now I'm back on it. It's kind of pretty, but there's no point. You can't see it. Just hang in and I'll show you when we get to the top and the sun comes up. Just a little panoramic of everything. Beautiful little town below. It is crazy hot and I'm gonna do what the locals do and get out of here. I will film the sunrise on my way down. Otherwise, the temperature's gonna start spiking and I'm gonna be screwed. Oh, this is so, it's not that strenuous of a hike. I mean, it's a good hike. It's not a, like somebody who's just doing their first hike wants to do. And so I'm gonna get a shot of the sunrise on my way down. The camera makes it a lot brighter than it is. There's some early glow, the sunrise. All right, so I've come down a little bit. The camera makes it a lot brighter than it is. It's still pretty dark. See easterly there, a little glow. The camera's brightening it up way more than it is. Maybe I can get the sun coming up. probably got into bed. I mean, he was probably home by seven, what do you think? Oh yeah, usually I think I was home, like sunrise was at 6.18. Yeah. And so, I filmed it and then I zipped down and. Yeah, and the hike was right literally behind our house. We, yeah. we kind of showed it. We talked about it in other videos. Yeah, so I saw him come home, he got showered, got back into bed, and I was just like, well, we don't have anything else to do, so we're just gonna relax. I slept for a couple more hours and I woke up at nine o'clock were you already up or were you still in bed? I don't remember. I don't remember. But I went and sat up at about nine o'clock in the morning and it felt like I was on a whirly twirly roller coaster. My whole body just was like spinning. I thought, oh, I just sat up too quickly. I laid back down, closed my eyes and thought that it would pass because you know, we get dizzy when we sit up too fast and it did not stop laying down with my eyes closed. I laid there for five, 10 minutes or so and then I instantly realized this isn't going away, this is vertigo. I couldn't open my eyes, I could barely move, but I also knew I was getting so dizzy I was going to get sick. So I think I either woke him up or called him into the room. I gotta go to the bathroom, like this is not gonna be good. Somehow got to the bathroom, didn't leave the bathroom for probably two, almost three hours. Wouldn't you, I mean it was a long time. It was time. a long time. I was sick 
the entire time. I'm gonna be dumb. I could not move a finger. I could not reach over to grab toilet paper without getting sick, like getting dizzy and sick. Any motion or visual movement. Anything, so I had my eyes closed. So I sat there for a really, really long time. Was really worried because we had a flight in a day and a half. Two and a half days. Two and a half days. Also, we're on vacation and I don't want to be like sick. I didn't panic, I just, I needed to know what I needed to do. I was also kind of worried because I had just done two root canals. I don't think I really told you guys that I went in for a second root canal a week after my first one. I did a video about me getting the first root canal because it was a surprise root canal, but I went back for another one. And I didn't know if something had gone wrong with that. I don't have pain, but the reason why I didn't know I even had two root canals to get done is because I didn't have any pain. And the doctor was surprised by that. So I was worried at this point that there was some kind of an infection that had started in my tooth, spread up to my ears that I wasn't aware of because I wasn't feeling pain for whatever reason. This is more of a spiritual thing. I won't really go into a ton of detail. I had him give me a blessing and then we said a prayer and I said many, many prayers of knowing what to do. Not necessarily, I mean, I wanted to get feeling better, but I also needed to know what to do because we weren't home and we're not in our same state and my insurance won't work in that state and I can't go to an ER and I can't go to an urgent care without paying for out of pocket. God bless American healthcare. <laughs> And so I didn't know what to do. So what do we do when we like don't know what to do? We call our mom. So I call my mom, mom. and I just, I could barely talk. Like I told you, motion made me sick, talking made me sick. And so with my eyes closed, sitting on the toilet, I called my mom and I said, mom, I don't know what to do. And instantly I knew to call my neighbor. I have her call my neighbor next door to her. So I grew up in Northern Utah in Logan and our neighbors have been our neighbors since I was like 11, since we built our house. He's an ENT and he has been like my whole life. And he has helped me out in the past, different problems, things stuck in my ears. And so he's just a great guy and great friends. My mom called him, got his number and ended up talking to him. And my mom had told me, she's like, he knew instantly what was wrong with you. He knew instantly how to help you. I knew it had something to do with the ear. It was yeah. either gonna be COVID or it was gonna be the ear. I called him and we started talking and he instantly knew it was not related to any kind of infection in my ear or in my um, tooth from the root canal. He said, it happened when you sat up. Like you didn't have any symptoms when you were laying down. It just happened when you sat up. And he said, did you sit up really suddenly after waking up really quick? And I said, yes. He just knew it was vertigo. And he, he said, there's little, it's like little balls in our eardrums and they just get out of whack like a marble and knew that that was what was wrong and we found a pharmacy near us it and a, it has a fancy little name medical yeah name for i don't remember it was, what it was but. found a pharmacy and was willing to call in a steroid and valium and then luckily we already had meclizine emotion sickness medication we give it to chelsea when we travel and fly because she just gets nauseous when she's on planes when she's doing the descent so we had a ton of meclizine and I had already taken some meclizine because I knew that it would help stabilize me in some way. So he was glad that I already had that. Jason went and got all the medication. It cost us $22, which I was shocked with paying that amount. I mean, we didn't have- pretty it, regular drugs. So. Yeah, there is, steroid is. So that day I instantly took both medications, including the Valium. And it, by the time we got the medications, it was nighttime, turn of events. He still had to take care of kids and go find the medications and all this kind of stuff. And the next day was kind of a blur. I was on the Valium again, and I think that made my symptoms kind of worse. I don't know if it helps other people with vertigo, but I felt like when I woke up in the morning, I was still somewhat dizzy, but I was now being able to function enough to get out of bed and at least walk with help to the bathroom without like feeling like I was gonna fall over. But once I started taking the Valium, I felt like dead weight. Like obviously it makes you tired, that's one of the, the side effects of it, but I felt like, and it gets rid of the it's supposed dizziness. supposed to chill you out too, people. Yeah. yeah. But I felt like dead weight. Like if I had lifted my arm, it would have felt like a 25 ton brick. And I, I you know, and so like sitting on the toilet I felt like I was going to fall off the toilet and I almost did. I almost fell asleep and fell off the toilet for sitting there for two minutes and I just decided Valium wasn't for me. It just was not, it was too heavy of a drug for me to take. So I stuck with the meclizine and the prednisone and I stayed in bed all Sunday, all Monday, all 
Tuesday morning. I don't know what happened with the kids. I don't know what he did with them. That's why he's here because he was taking care of them. He he went and got extra well, groceries stayed, and, and dinners and... Yeah, I zipped around to get food and we basically stayed inside. I mean, yeah. there wasn't much else to do. There's not much to do in California right now. We yeah. swam in the pool. We just did stuff. Yeah. Watched so, movies. So there wasn't much footage because he was kind of having to do it all. There's a, a one clip of um, Ashley and Chelsea jumping in the pool with their clothes on because Abby um, challenged them to that and she, she still owes some them yeah. some candy, I think is what the deal oh, was. Candy. I'll insert that clip right here because it's kind of cute. I didn't see it until I was getting the footage the other day. Ready? Go. So that was kind of cute. You had gone out and got dinner. Oh. All right, so we're out of food because we leave tomorrow, but we're hungry. So I am now go doing the whole mad dash. We didn't go eat out very much this trip because everything's closed. So I am doing a dash to Cheesecake for Abby, Panda for myself, Dana, Kaylee, and McDonald's for the Chelsea Ashland. Oh, so it'll be a little bad run. Oh, I gotta get the car started. Oh crap. Probably the well, last I night. I wanted to make it like everybody get what they want. So I had to go to multiple yeah. restaurants trying to order a line. I was gonna film it and do everything, but it was such a giant pain in the butt to park, get out, Mask. do all these different things, go to different places that I had to stop filming. And yeah, you started. And then... Yeah, it could have been a great little action scene of here and there, but it was well, pain it, in the butt driving around. It was working its way back up to 117 degrees yeah, as well. Bloody so hot. there's not much footage from those two days. <laughs> That's probably basically it. We get to Tuesday morning. Our flight is Tuesday night at 6 p.m. down in Long Beach. We're two hours away from Long Beach. So I had planned on waking up early and going down to Huntington Beach and spending the day down there shopping, souvenirs. Well, first we talked about going to Joshua Tree, but the kids right. didn't wake up in time. I knew they weren't. They weren't going to get I up I wanted in to time. go there, but. You needed to get up and get ahead of the I heat. Know. Yeah, but as they much as you haven't can. been waking up before 10 o'clock. Yeah, like months. it's 1130 now and Katie hasn't come down yet. <laughs> She's awake. She's just laying in bed. She, yeah, so Joshua Tree was out. Um, it would have been really hot if they had gone when they did wake up. So I had kind of thought, okay, well maybe we can still go down and at least have lunch in Huntington Beach, do some shopping. We hadn't bought um, Abby and Kaylee any souvenirs, like a t-shirt. I wasn't gonna do anything extravagant. That was my plan at that point because I was my medication was working well enough that I could, I yeah, got up. Doing fine. I was moving fine Tuesday morning. I was able to start packing my bag even Monday night, I was able to start folding some of my stuff and putting my gear away. But I did too much Tuesday morning, so then he ended up having to do all the rest. He had to clean that house, he had to do all the laundry, take all the sheets off the beds, all the towels had to be washed. I got sick of doing dishes. He got sick of doing dishes by hand because the dishwasher was broken. The kids did well packing up their bags, they knew how to do that. They're just used to packing their own stuff. But it was a lot of work for him and I felt bad because I literally just had to lay on a bed without sheets on it. I just had to like lay there because I couldn't get up anymore. I just kept getting dizzy and I didn't know what our day was going to look like in terms of these flights and I certainly couldn't go back to where I had been and get on a flight. I couldn't. Well, I'm not going to let someone who's dizzy, right. who's throwing up on a plane. We're admitting that they're on Valium. I don't know. I didn't well, want to like. Lots of people on planes are on Valium. <laughs> they're not letting anyone look anyway sick on right. a plane. So I just laid in bed and waited for him to get everything all cleaned up and packed up and it put us behind schedule. So the video that shows us, I, I have a video of our travel day coming home that will come out um, tomorrow or you'll see it whatever day, the next video. I don't know when this video is going to go up. That'll be the next video and you'll see our travel day and I actually did really, really well. I was surprised at how well I did. And then I'll just explain a little bit here because I don't know that I explained it a ton yet on in the next video but I woke up I think I kind of did I woke up yeah you know, the morning we got back into town and had forgotten that I needed to have my medication and some food next to me in bed in order to take it right when I woke up and so I was four hours behind schedule on taking my medication by the time my kids woke up and so I kind of had a 
relapse and was back in bed, you know, again for an entire day. Yesterday was a good day. I filmed yesterday. There's another video for that. Today is like the first day, literally the first day since Sunday and today is Friday that I don't feel dizzy. Like not at all. I took my medication on time this morning. I have eaten and done laundry and unpacked some of my bags finally. You know, he did a ton of work for the kids. They relaxed and enjoyed their time going in and out of the pool and stuff. And I feel bad that we didn't end up doing more, but the reality of it was there really wasn't much more to do there because yeah. everything was closed and it was so bloody hot that there was no touristy things to go out and do. I do not recommend Palm Desert, Palm Springs in August. Hmm. I don't really even recommend it. <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest. Yeah. I don't know, unless you're staying at some fancy golf course resort in Palm Springs, I don't even know. I guess if you want to golf. Yeah. I don't know what else there is to do there. I don't know. I have, we have friends that across the street that go there every spring. I'm like, I don't even know why. I don't. So that's kind of my experience with Vertigo. It was my first time. It was kind of scary, but I was grateful that I had that doctor friend of mine back home that was able to just quickly walk me through it. It's not a big deal. We're going to get you medication. So I'm, I am grateful. It's not a quick fix. It's definitely like, it takes a couple days. Like even yesterday, I started feeling mildly dizzy in the car and an instant headache because I ran out of water and I was like, oh, I gotta get home. Like, cause I, this could come back. Also the prednisone, which is the steroid, you have to wean off of it. So now I'm weaning off of it. I'm on this, there's three different, you do three days and then two days and one day of reducing the medications. And my mom was telling me two days ago, she was like, do not mess that up. Don't mess up that schedule. If it says take two pills a day and then take two pills tomorrow. You take those on time. Because she said there's, you can have heart problems, you can have palpitations, you can have like, you can be end up in the ER if you don't stay on that schedule with the steroid um, reduction. So I've been very meticulous about that. And other than that, like the, Vertigo feels like today for the first time is almost completely gone. So hopefully I don't have any more side effects from it and I don't ever want to have it again. It was awful. Anyway, that's kind of a recap. So now the next two videos are going to make more sense why we didn't really do much more. There isn't any more fun night swimming videos and, and activities. Done, uh, how I do my laundry a bunch of times. Yeah. He could have done a cleaning video, but it was really chaotic and I just I wouldn't have even asked him to do that Had I even been feeling mildly better because it was pretty chaotic. That's it. It's just a recap of our trip and Traveling during the pandemic was it went well I'll, I'll just recap that if you want to give your thoughts on it. It went better than I expected They're pretty meticulous with making you wear your mask in the airport like if you're I eating have to food, everywhere. no, I know you do. But in the airport, I didn't know people would like kind of sneak it. But if you saw people sneak it, sneaking their mask down if they weren't eating, and they had airport people on them, like get it on, you know. They had people just lining the halls, like just not doing anything but telling people to put their mask up. So, and we stayed in our little group, and they even let us on the plane early one time because they wanted us to stay together and be away from everyone. So I feel like in terms of the safety of being able to travel right now ended up being good. Do well, I want at least with this airlines with these flights because they didn't it wasn't very full. Yeah. They every the, the fullest flight they the middle seats were empty. Yeah. People could still space out. And our, uh, yeah, our last flight was from Vegas, and so it was our fullest flight. Yeah. And even that that was the one where they were like, okay, this is a fuller flight. We want to make sure you as a family get a big open spot by yourselves. So they let us on the plane earlier than we were supposed to. And they said, go to the back of the plane, go get your area to yourself, and then we'll let everyone else on. Um, in terms of travel and going on vacations during a pandemic, we're not gonna do it again. It felt like a little bit of a vacation when we left, but it felt like a stress when we came home. And I don't wanna feel like that coming home from, or going and being on a vacation. So travel plans are off. I think it's off for everyone. It doesn't matter, but. Well, we. We had thoughts of going to Hawaii this I, No, winter. I was actually like, I mean, the plane was the most dangerous thing we did, being in the airports, going right. on the plane. They did as much as they can do to mitigate it. Right. Um, but literally, we were the only people that used the pool for a week. Yeah, and when we were there. No one else was even, ever even touched the pool. Uh, well, and the HOA president, he was on the board, he lived right in front of the pool on the other side of us. He came out and he's like, you guys are the first people that have used this pool. He was excited to see in a long time. Of it and the kids out playing. But 
There was no one else using it. Yeah. So we were totally isolated the whole time except flying. At least we can say Southwest did a good job. They did a really good job. I know he other would, lines aren't apparently by different people, different flights, I don't know. But um, he would do I'm his, not excited to fly and do no. stuff again. I would, um, he even, like we wiped down our seats and our trays and the walls. He was washing down the walls at one point. Every single time we got on a plane and we were on four different planes. It's I would easily cleaner. say the towels came out with very little yeah. on them. One I was, was uh, I think a newer plane, but no, not that new. Not that new. It wasn't that new, but uh, no, definitely cleaner. Yeah. Because before we would wipe down the headrest and it would just be a black hand. And this time, I don't even think it really showed black at all. You like I, I you handed one to me at one point, and I knew you had used it, but I looked at it and I was like, "But this hasn't been used." But I knew it had been. I had seen you using it, and so that's how clean the planes were. So they're so, doing a good job of keeping things clean. Yeah. Which is just know if you have to travel right now. They're doing a better job. They're doing a really good job at keeping the planes clean. I was thinking that Southwest would be a little bit less of a standard because they're just a cheaper airline. It but just they were doing good. They're yeah. doing a good job. Like I said, we were we have thoughts of going to Hawaii if it opens up. I don't think it will um, anytime before Christmas, just because we have all these vouchers and stuff. I don't think I, don't I think want to. I think they open until we get a vaccine. Honestly, the way they're no. going, they're not going to open at all. So. And I won't go into detail of all the different things that have changed. It changes almost every other day. Yeah. But I, the experience of being on a vacation and having to wear the mask, we went and did this on our own, you know, free will. We w chose to do this. We really needed to get away from the, our normal setting and get our kids out and kind of shake our legs and just go and relax in a different place. But Hawaii is different and I, it's a different experience. We want to enjoy things. We want to enjoy so. being outside. It's the whole point going of being to in Hawaii. Doing stuff. I, it, it wasn't, it won't be that experience with wearing a mask. And so we're probably going to put off and do it next year um, during our, our spring break and our winter break. A lot of people are traveling or they travel this summer to go see family and sightsee in national parks and things like that. I think that would have been fine if we had done that route, but this was the best we could do and it ended up what it was, but we're now home doing virtual travel school or virtual school. For yeah, school starts soon, so that'll be fun. The next couple months. So anyway. Long-winded video. I just wanted to be able to explain everything that kind of went down. Okay, really quick. I think my disc is full. That's it. Uh, we just want to kind of explain and and our little travel days. You'll see us come home in the next video. If you've traveled or done anything, you know, trying to be normal during all this crap, uh, let us know what worked, what yeah. didn't work below. If, you know, maybe uh, it will help someone else that needs to travel or or is thinking about it but then decides they don't want to yeah leave a yeah, comment leave your stories below it's always fun to read i yeah. always appreciate it and thanks for commenting along our little travel videos it was fun to like find out how hot it is where other people are and and what you guys are doing to beat that heat and whatnot but thank you for watching and hopefully you'll come along for our regular life now <laughs> back to school so take care you guys and we'll see you next time